A large storm will be coming to the United States over the next few days, and this is going to bring some very interesting weather to the United States. And one of the most interesting things that we are going to see out of this storm is the potential for a water spout outbreak back over in the Great Lakes region. In addition to that, this particular storm is going to bring a big cold blast to areas like the Midwest and the Ohio Valley with the first feeling of fall weather coming to the United States. In addition to that, plenty of showers and thunderstorms and some severe weather will be possible with this storm anywhere from Texas all the way back into the Northeast. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about this storm and why it's going to be very interesting over the next few days. Let's begin by talking about this large storm, and we're going to begin with looking at the 500 millibar height anomalies. The reason why I'm showing you this is it gives you an idea of how cold the temperatures will be aloft back over in the Great Lakes region Saturday morning. That is really cold air, by the way, right over the state of Michigan for this time of the year, very below average. And this is in the high altitude so we're talking about a really cold pocket of arctic air that's aloft and the reason why this is so important is that that cold air is going to kind of mix in with the very warm temperatures that are currently associated with the lakes back over in lake michigan and as well as lake erie those areas are really dealing with very warm lake waters right now as we're in early september and then in addition to that we're gonna have a lot of vorticity or spin across both of these lakes and that's going to create the potential for some water spouts and we could even see a water spout outbreak take place across both Lake Michigan and as well as Lake Erie. So definitely something to watch for on Saturday out of this particular system. And then once we go into Sunday into Monday, that low pressure system will continue to move northeast, bring the potential for showers and some thunderstorms into the northeast United States back through the southeast as well. And in addition to that, cold air will be on the back side of this, which we're going to talk more about here in just a couple of minutes. In addition to the other interesting things that this particular system will bring. One other thing I want to mention, by the way, is that we're not even talking about booming thunderstorms on Saturday. We are literally just talking about showers that are going to be on both Lake Michigan and probably Lake Erie, and that's going to bring the potential for water spouts, which is just very interesting, especially for September. Now let's dive into the future radar and give you an idea of where there will be a potential for showers and thunderstorms over the next few days and where there might be a potential for some severe weather and who's going to be dealing with great weather across the United States. So beginning with Wednesday, high pressure will continue to dominate in the Northeast and back into the Midwest, but that's not going to last super long because we are going to have a little sneaky trough come out of Canada as we go later into the week, and that's going to be what brings the potential for showers and thunderstorms and also much colder weather to areas in the Midwest and and the Ohio Valley. By the time we go into Thursday, showers and storms will continue across the Texas coast back into the mid-Atlantic. This is an area that's just going to continue to deal with the potential for some flash flooding. Several inches of rain are expected over the next few days near the Gulf Coast. Once we go into Friday, that continues across the Gulf Coast, and then eventually our low pressure center will start to move into parts of the Northeast and as well as back through the Ohio Valley. This will bring some showers and some thunderstorms, and I wouldn't be surprised if we have a low threat for severe weather on Friday. Friday in Ohio and Pennsylvania. I don't see there being some sort of outbreak right now when it comes to tornadoes or damaging winds, but I do think this will definitely be something to watch for. Now, once we go into Saturday, that's when we're going to be watching for some showers on the backside of this low pressure system to bring the potential for some water spouts across both Lake Michigan and perhaps even Lake Erie, and that's where we'll be watching for maybe, again, a water spout outbreak. Now, the good news with these water spouts is that they probably will not do much damage if they made it inland, but it is something to watch for for as we go into Saturday afternoon and even maybe in the morning hours. So morning and afternoon look like the two time frames for that. It's not set in stone yet that this is definitely going to happen because this can be hard to predict with a low pressure center. If it moves 50 miles further north or south, it could make a big difference to what happens. So just keep that in mind. It's not like this is a guaranteed lock in stone, but if it does happen, it could be very interesting over in the lakes region. Once we go later into Saturday, low pressure starts to intensify a little bit back over north of New England. It'll bring the potential for maybe a bit of a wind threat and maybe an isolated tornado threat on Saturday to parts of New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and then back through Delaware and Maryland. And then once we go into Sunday, watch this. We actually could see a small little mixture of maybe some rain, sleet, or snow just north of Michigan. So just keep that in mind. We are getting pretty close here to fall, uh, officially starting at least astronomically. So definitely something to watch for. And then once we go into Sunday into Monday, that low pressure center will probably keep spinning up in the Northeast, but I don't think it's going to bring much more in terms of, you know, severe weather. It will probably just bring a few more showers to those areas. And then once we go into the middle of next week, things still look pretty quiet across most of the lower 48, including the West Coast. Not really a whole lot expected over there. We'll continue to monitor the Gulf of Mexico for some tropical development. We are going to talk more about that here in a few minutes. There is still a potential that we see a tropical
tropical storm or maybe even a hurricane sometime in the next 10 days. And we're going to talk more about that again later in the forecast. Now, the temperatures are going to be a pretty big talk over the next few days, especially in the Midwest and the Ohio Valley, where all that Canada cold air is going to be diving right into the Midwest and as well as the Ohio Valley. So definitely be ready for that this weekend and even on Friday, where you might need a little light jacket in those areas. Many areas will drop into the 40s for low temperatures and even some upper 30s. Once we go into Saturday and as well as into Sunday, that cold air will start to move through the Ohio Valley, eventually into parts of the Northeast, and that'll bring, again, some cooler weather for the weekend. Once we go into next week, though, that cold air is not going to last very long. If you're in the Northeast, you'll deal with it probably until Tuesday or Wednesday, but it's not even going to be that cold up there. It's going to be mostly just cold in the Ohio Valley and Midwest. And then once we go back into the middle and end of the following week, so around September 12th or 13th, not really looking at much of cold air at all, unless you're in the Northeast or up and down the East Coast, which it's going to be very close to average in general. So overall, definitely enjoy the cooler weather while it's here because warm air will definitely build back in as we go into next week. Current forecasted temperatures for Saturday morning, low temperatures in fact, currently looking to see some mid to low 40s in parts of Wisconsin. We also could see some upper 30s in northern Wisconsin, which means our first frost of the season will be possible. The good news is temperatures will climb back on Sunday. We're going to be talking about many areas in the 40s and as well as some low 50s across the Ohio Valley and Midwest, which honestly is going to feel great, especially if you are without an AC. It's going to be great weather overall. Now, here's the Climate Prediction Center's forecast for the next several days from Monday of next week until Friday. Below average temperatures are still likely from Texas back into the northeast for next week, while warm air continues to build near the Rocky Mountains and also west of the Rockies. And then the precipitation forecast still pretty much the same as before. We're still going to be dealing with below average precipitation for most of next week for almost the entire lower 48, the only exception being the Gulf Coast and also the Pacific Northwest. Now, the tropics are looking sort of active, but not really. We do have three areas of development right now in the Atlantic Ocean, all with low chances of development, beginning with the eastern one. We have one just coming off the coast of Africa as of a couple of days ago. This may develop into something, but it's probably just going to end up being a fish storm, so not really too concerning at this point. It would probably be pretty brief. We also have another area of development that just came out. This one is a little bit newer. Uh, it came out yesterday morning. This one, we're currently looking at a potential for development, but it's, again, another low chance. If this one does develop, it looks like it could kind of go in the direction maybe of staying north of the Lesser Antilles and east of the Bahamas. But even then, again, it's a low chance of development as of right now. And the one that's been the big talk and has been the most clickbaited, you know, hurricane at this point that, you know, apparently there's a Gulf hurricane or whatever is this one. Again, there's really no, you know, evidence that we are definitely going to see a hurricane here. There's still about a 30% chance of development over the next seven days. If this does develop, it'll probably be in the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. And even then, we don't really know what's going to happen from there. It could very easily go to the north and become a tropical storm, maybe a hurricane, but again, just too hard to tell really what's going to happen there right now. But we'll talk more about that here in a second about what I think might happen. Let's just hop right into the ensemble members, which give you an idea of where these tropical cyclones may track with a bunch of different members in an ensemble group. Right now, back over in the Gulf of Mexico, most of the GEFS model runs do not really indicate much of anything happening over the next few days. Maybe some sort of gradual development, but really none of these bring it beyond like a tropical depression or storm right now. Now, I do think if this sits in the Gulf long enough, we could see this intensify into a tropical storm or hurricane, but again, not really any evidence right now that that is definitely going to happen. And then our other two tropical waves kind of looks messy out here, but here's your first one. Here's your second one. Right now, the potential of the second one developing, it's actually further west, but the potential of the second one developing that's a bit closer to Lesser Antilles, I would say is still pretty low. There are a few ensemble members, though, that do indicate that this could become a tropical storm or even a hurricane as we go sometime into next week, back over maybe between Bermuda and the United States, but it is likely to curve, so I don't think this will be any impact to the United States, at least for now, but it will be something to watch for later on. And then our other tropical wave coming off the Africa coast, I'm not seeing really much of any development out of that one. It might become a brief tropical depression or storm, but beyond that, does not look too concerning as of right now. Now, I do want to mention today's forecast. Overall, it was made off of no internet. I've been using my phone hotspot, so there are some graphics I was not able to update, but the weather information is basically the same as it would be if, even if I had internet. So just letting you guys know that, um, yeah, I've had no internet for 12 hours, so I don't know what to tell you. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you've not already.